Well, it's been a while, hasn't it? So, uh, I'm back. I don't know how long for, maybe for 10 minutes, if you're lucky. Uh, <clears throat> so, I'm on the River Ribble today again. And I'm trying to do a bit of chub and barbel fishing. It's, uh, it's looking quite good conditions, to be fair. It's going to be a nice day. And the water's up a little, the river's up a little. I'll show you all that in a minute. Just a bit of a quick intro to show you what, tell you what I'm doing. So I've got two rods. I'm out on the old, uh, one's on a feeder, one's on a lead. I'm using PVA bags and a feeder. Uh, ground bait, I'm going for the pellet and boiler, boiler approach on one rod. And a pellet and ground bait with some boilies and bits and bobs chucked in on the uh, feeder. I've come to the top end of the swim, well I say top end, near the top end and I fished here a couple of times before I've got to go when it was quite dark and I didn't really want to trek trek all the way down the bottom it was quite dark and I didn't feel too safe going down there to be quite honest it was really quite, it's quite dangerous on this particular stretch so I've come to a, a swim that I normally fish well I have fished in the past I've never had much, nothing big out of here I've, Tend to mainly only have chub, but the water's up, so a bit of a good flow on it. And I'm fishing a bit further down, downstream from where I'm fishing. And I'm hoping to pick the odd one or two fish up, maybe a, the odd chub. I would like a barbel. I'm, I'm not here long, I'm only here till half past one because I'm going to be somewhere later on. And it is now 10 to 8, so I got here for about 6. We start fishing till about quarter to seven. So far, all that's happened is me fucking me past the tub has opened up in my bag, so I've had to scoop that out. And that's pretty much it really. That's all that's happened so far. I've got a few things to do. You know, I've got a bit of a review. I need to do these. I did a review a while ago actually on my rods. And my two and a half pounders, my Harrisons, but it weren't, it was, it was crackly. I don't know why it was crackly. It was an absolute pain in the arse. So I couldn't really use it. So I'm going to have a quick go later on, a quick, a fresh do at that. So I'm, so today pretty much is a bit of fishing, but I'm going to also try and do a few reviews for you if I can. I'm not going to promise you that I can do them, depending on how the time goes and I mean, time flies when you're fishing, doesn't it? So it's, I'm pending on battery life as well. So, there you have it. I will show you everything else a bit later on. Right now I'm out to have a brew. And, I'll probably have a recast very shortly. And that's pretty much it really to report for now. Hoping you're all doing well. Yeah, like I said, I've not been around for a while. I've tended up to fish in the summer. Especially this summer, it's been bloody hot, hasn't it? Christ, it's been hot. Uh, and that's... Now it's coming autumn. Well, it's been, oh, been autumn for a while, but... I don't have my van anymore. I sold my van. I'm waiting for my new one. That's going to be quite a long while, I think. I've already been waiting five months. So I could be waiting another, another five months. If I can get that, I'm kind of stumped at getting fishing. So, that's a quick update for you as well, and yeah, I'll have a quick coffee and I'll speak to you all very soon. The only thing that's happening really, I'm getting older, to be fair. And no, not much fishing in, which is a bit, a bit of a shame. So anyways, I'm waffling on. I'll speak to you all very shortly. Right, I'm going to show you again, for the people that are interested. I've had a couple of messages who are asking me what bait I'm using. 
So <laughs> I'll do it right quick while I've got my rods in. And I'll also show you the rig that I'm doing. The rig's very similar to what I normally use, but I'm using a different hook link material. I'm using a braid instead of a fluorocarbon because the water's quite coloured and I've got a uh, the corder corder the finger corder the camo in 15 pound coated up link if you can see that that's what I'm using and I'm using about two foot of this stuff or a bit, probably a bit more actually, about two and a half foot. Uh, bait wise, it's uh, quite simple on this rod to be fair. I'm just using a halibut pellet. Stink there, fuckers. So. It's just a halibut pellet, nothing special. Hair rigged on. I'm using one of those uh, fancy clips. Boily really stops, where it fits into the actual pellet itself. And it really fits in there, really, really snugly. Really snugly. So, that's pretty much that. And as far as the mix to go in the feeder, it's just this. I don't know if you can see. So what it is, it's pretty much uh, there's a lot of pellet, a few boilies in there, there's some hemp in there, a lot of oils, a bit of water to make it a little bit stodgy so it sticks in better into the, uh, the feeder. And the, the ground bait that I'm using, well, there's a little bit of uh, dynamite, crushed hemp ground bait, and the majority of it is Hinder's Multimix. I was using that from uh, hinders the uh, barbel bomb but the problem is I run out straight straight answer I run out so I need to get some more of that to be fair uh, let me just fill this feeder up so that's all I'm doing just a nice feeder full And the hook link, it's, uh, it's just it's just on a running rig. Get out of the bag. It's on a size eight, and it's just on. I'm just using a uh, a braid, a coated braid. To me, I think the reason why I'm going to use the coated braid on here because I think it's just a little bit more tougher. I mean, there was times last year when I was on. I caught some decent fish and I got them in on the, the, the 10, 12 pound fluorocarbon but there was times when it snapped it must have been rubbing up against something so I think the best way to eliminate that is just to go straight to a, a 15 pound braid coated braid you still get the stiffness you get the supple bit at the end as you can see just like a carp angler would probably tell you and it, it doesn't tangle because it's coated and it's, it's just a lot lot stronger and it's a lot lot more durable on the when the when the water's up, there's a lot of debris coming down, there's a lot of leaves. Your rods will be sat there nice and neat, up in the air, and all of a sudden they'll just bend right round because it's just got absolute a shed load of uh, leaves around it. Well that's the pretty much all I'm doing. So that's one rod. I'll show you the next rod in about five minutes. I'm just gonna get this back out. I'm doing that with a PVA bag and I'll show you what I'm using there. I'll speak to you in a second. watching that tip right so different different other rod so it's like what I'm using are oh, boilies on this one what's going on here
bloody thing. Uh, oh, they smell lovely to them. So you, you'd have seen these before. I've got a couple of pots of these already done. As you can see, there's just 12 mil krill boilies, but they've been in the grill, the, the krill sauce for quite a long time. These are probably the, the oldest I've got. The other ones are about six months old. I tend to do them at the end of every season. Uh, river season and do another batch. So they've been soaking for a couple of months at least until I go fishing. But I don't, I don't really use that much of them. So I've got this pot and another pot and it goes like a very thick, gungy. And to me that's perfect. That's how I like it. I mean, I've had a lot of chub on this over the years. You know, sometimes I'll take these bream fishing and do quite well with bream. If there's a, a maggot ban, I've done quite well with these. So, that's how it lasts. Pretty much the only you really use a krill boilie on the rivers. Uh, I do use another boilie which I've got down here. Which you've all seen before, it's from Dynamite. It's the cheesy garlic one, I think it is. On. It's very simple. I don't. You just don't need to complicate things. People. I watch people on YouTube myself. I mean, I do follow a lot of people. And the things they do. It, it just makes life hard work for themselves. I don't know why you'd want to do that. But mine's just very simple. I think simplicity is is the way forward. I want to maneuver that and I'll put some paste on that. If I can find the paste. Cruel paste. It just. Some of that I've always done, put paste on. On my boilies. It's just a bit of confidence, I think, for me. Isn't it? nothing more you know if I chuck it out without paste on I'm not, I'm not too worried on all the work then boilies but if you've got paste I like to put a bit of paste on personally everybody's different my mate puts paste in his uh, in his lead so I, I don't do that I'd rather put it on the boilie to be fair everybody does it differently don't they So that's all I put on. Big blob. Just helps out, you know, with the uh, attraction. But as far as the uh, PVA bags go, what, which I'm using on this particular, uh, rod. Now, same again. I'm using krill boilies and krill pellets, but I've done them in a way. They're all covered in oil. So I've made a lot of sausages ready. You can see, I'll show you the loose bag I've got because I have some in my bag, in a bag. Just in case I want to fire a few out. Or if I run out of these, I can make some more. So all I'm pretty much doing with this is just tying it to the, uh, just tying it. To swivel, just one granny knot tends to stick. I 
I mean, it never, it never tangles when I do it. I always stop the, stop the lead before it hits the, uh, hits the water. So it all straightens out. So it's never a problem. And I think we're having a heavy, heavy cup of boilers on with some paste on it. Really helps it fly out. So there's no problem there, tangles. But as far as the lead's concerned, the lead's actually a, a four ounce lead. That feeder's a three ounce, lead, uh, three ounce feeder I'm using. But, but if you can see me boilies, so this is pretty much what I'm using. So it's just them. So it's pretty much a lot of. I think it was a, when it started off, I had two two kilos of uh, cruel boilies and probably a kilo of pellet of cruel pellet, and they're all sticky baits. And then what I do, I just put them in, a, in my bucket, stick a lot of oil in there. So there's a bit of end oil, there's a bit of you can see at the bottom just how oily they are. If you can see that well, but they are they are very oily. I'll take a picture of that and I'll try and show you the picture just how oily they are and I tend to use them for it's something different you know so I'm going to start using these now in the PVA bags when I'm fishing and whatnot. so right I'm going to let this rod out I'm waffling and I'll speak to you all shortly Right, then here's a bit of an update for you. I'm not going to be here much longer. But it's now 10 to 1. And if I'm honest with you, it has been piss poor. It's just been pff, absolutely shocking. It's, uh, I don't know, I don't know if it's me or what. It's just been weird. There's a lot of shit coming down the river. You can see it catching my lines, leaves are catching it, and once a leaf catches it, it catches more leaves, and all of a sudden, your rods are buckled round, and then it, it moves everything. It's just, oh my God, it's been a bit of a nightmare, really. Not really had anything. I've had a few, I fished closer in before, on the crease, just here. I had a few taps and dunks and wallops, but that's about it. You have just seen a minute since I've spun my rods round and I'm facing under the bridge. This is like the last, you know, last ditch effort. You know, it's, it's the last, last hoorah before I go home. So I'm hoping something's going to happen. If I'm honest, we'll have to wait and see. Well, that is pretty much going to be me. If I don't catch nothing, this will be the end. If I catch something. I'll come back and show you, but in the next 25 minutes I will be packing up and I will be going. That's how bad it's been. I don't know if you had a fished under the bridge earlier. I don't know, it's just one of them. This peg attempted to do all right out for a fish, for at least a chub. Or a chub hybrid, but uh, no, it hasn't been the best. If I'm truly honest with you. At least I've got out. That's the main thing. I've got, done you a video. Don't know how the video's going to turn out. It might be crackly. I'm not too sure because I've got a new bloody uh, earphone here, uh, microphone. 
and yeah it's uh, uh, bloody hard work it's been bloody hard work but anyways Thanks for watching. I'll probably be back out again, hopefully, in the next week or two. Probably on the Ribble again, but probably not this stretch. A bit nearer to home, depending on what the weather does. Uh, I've got a lot of new gear that I've got. I need to get it reviewed. I just haven't, just haven't got the time. I've not got a van to go anywhere and do it. But I'm hoping next month, November, December, January, February, I'll probably only be river fishing. And then hopefully my van will be here before end of March. And then I can start doing my tent fishing and getting back to where it used to be. But until then, I'm stuck with the rivers, which I don't mind, I like river fishing. But uh, I'll try and get the odd night in as well on the river if I can. So, anyways. Speak to you all later. Thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, in the next 20 minutes, I can get one. Well, I can see if I get one, you'll see. If not, I'll see you all next time. Tight lines, everyone.